We want to welcome you to this podcast. My name is David Hinman, and I am with New Generations. I oversee the Southwest region of North America. Also, am involved in catalyzing prayer across North America. And we have Audrey Brown with us this morning. It's a real pleasure to have her. And she's an intercessor for New Generations, but it's more of a function than actually a, a title. But uh, she's also the, the wife of Harry Brown, who is the, the president of um, New Generations. And she spends a, a lot of time just praying for the movements that are happening around the world. Um, and that's a big part of her role. And so we want to say welcome to Audrey this morning. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a privilege to be part of the team. And um, yeah, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, How can I help? <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to just like kind of jump right in. I mean, I know you are known as being an uh, intercessor, and that's a huge part of your ministry. And I wanted you to maybe just kind of give us a picture of what that looks like, you know, on a daily basis or weekly basis. Like, what are the some of the, the rhythms that you've began to um, adopt as you intercede for disciple makers? Okay. Well, thank you. I, I don't even know how in the world I would be called an intercessor. Like that title seems so far above what I am, but I am a child of God who wants to be obedient. And often we just get so many requests and, and picture of what's going on in the world. And I am thrilled to be able to have a role and have a part. And I have been so deeply challenged by people who I would call intercessors. Um, and I want to grow in that. So if anything I can share can help someone along the way, I am just like one step, ahead, maybe one step ahead. And I'd love to help you take a few steps ahead. And so I'll just tell you what I do, but everybody is so different. And, and have you noticed in the scripture, it doesn't say you must do this and you must pray an hour. And you, there's no prescription. It's the Holy Spirit in us who guides us and, mm -hmm. and how God wants us to grow in it. So one of my favorite ways to pray is either prayer walking or riding my stationary bike and the reason for this is is because honestly I used to have this picture of praying on your knees was like the best thing to do and like I'd lay down or kneel by my bed um, but as a young mom trying to learn to grow and pray I just fell asleep <laughs> so I mean okay, that is not working for me so um, I started walking and um Fasting is something that was introduced kind of somewhere along the line and just recognized it was something as um, a step of obedience. And our our African brothers, they all fast and pray so much. So my husband and I um, have chosen to fast one whole day and use that time for extra prayer. And that's just a matter of us growing in self-control and obeying. Yeah. And, and that's just become a rhythm in our life. Um, I would say another one of the really important rhythms is praying in the moment. So many times I get a text, I'll get, I'll read a letter, I'll see something in the news, Harry will come out with something he had just heard on the phone. And so just stopping and praying in the moment. That's one of the things I do. And sometimes that can take up a lot of the day <laughs> because there's so many things coming in. Um, someone calls and I, I want to pray with them. Someone comes to the door or we I'm walking out walking and I run into someone and we always offer to pray. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's comfortable with that. I always just try and see where they're at, but praying in the moment is a big deal. Yeah. Um, using scripture, using prayers out of written prayers, using my hymn book. Um, sometimes when you just feel like your brain is blank, like I'm tired and I'm like, I can't think it, then I just use written <laughs> prayers. And then that triggers me and gets me going. Um, I think a really important part is to be quiet <laughs> and just say, Lord, who, what, where I'm, I'm here. Like, who do you want me to pray for? Mm -hmm. Um, singing is a big part of my time. Um, I think praising and worship is just a great way to start it off. And it always makes me cry <laughs> because um, entering into the presence of the Lord is really special. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> um, I'd say mornings are the best because before the day gets going, then the day gets going and it just gets all busy. But um, 
Yeah. And if I don't get it in the morning, then I'll just take off. And this is one of the things I do too. That's really important is talking out loud because it keeps you focused. You know how your brain goes distracted or you see things. So when you're talking to someone out loud, you're not being distracted, right? You're speaking to them. And so I love the fact that nowadays everybody's got their phones on and everybody's talking, uh, you know, or having conversations as they're walking around and um, one of my friends said, oh, you're going to look crazy walking around talking aloud all the time. And I thought, well, <laughs> not now. You know, everyone yeah. does it. <laughs> so I just uh, pretend my phone's on and I talk out loud. And that really helps me great. keep focused. Mm-hmm. I, I like that a lot. You know, I think it's, <laughs> it's true. I mean, I think people have to figure out what works really for them because we're all yeah. kind of shaped and wired differently. Like, like I feel like my most... Um, Productive times of intercession uh, and hearing from God happens through just like journaling, just writing things and being in, in solitude. Sometimes when I'm walking, I mean, I, I do prayer walking um, because you're able to, to see what things need to be prayed for. But sometimes I get distracted. Um, but that's really neat that you're able to kind of like learn how to, um, you know, what works for you um, right. and right. lean into those things. Um, you mentioned um, at different times I've talked to you just about things that you're learning um, in regards to spiritual warfare. I mean, you, you we, we could say that all prayer is spiritual warfare in, in yeah, one sense yeah. because we're really um, overcoming, you know, the, the kingdom of darkness with the kingdom of light. I mean, that's what prayer is really uh, accomplishing. Um, yeah. I wonder if you could just share some of the insights that you're learning as it relates mm. to spiritual warfare. Mm. Well, I, I would say that praying aloud is one of the insights I've learned because from the model of Jesus, Jesus spoke out loud to the enemy. He used the sword, which is the word of God. And when he, he spoke to the enemy in the desert and took him down another time, he said, get behind me, Satan. I mean, yeah. you see him using his voice. And I have really come to realize that's one of the key things is in, in praying together, like being in a group, you are praying out loud because the spirit world is, can't read our thoughts. God can. But I I always think of this, you know, like you can pray and talk to God in this inner sanctuary of the Holy, this temple of the Holy Spirit, right? And he can hear everything. But if you're going to be addressing the spirit world, you have to do it out loud. And so I think that's an important thing to remember that I learned from Jesus is that, you know, if I'm going to say, get out of here, Satan, I'm going to say it out loud. You know, I'm resisting you in the name of Jesus and using scripture, using scripture, using scripture. Can't think of anything more important than using the spirit the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That is so key. And and that's what Jesus modeled. Mm. And interesting, um, everything that Jesus used is available to us. He is the word of God. He used his voice. You know, that that, that to me is astounding. Um, I think another key thing is it's a truth encounter, not a power encounter. Because people hear about intercession and they talk about, oh, this person of great faith and you get this feeling like I'm nobody I'm nothing I don't have great faith like what can I do that thought is from the enemy because it's not about my power it's not about how spiritual I am it's not about my standing in the church it's none of that stuff it is all a hundred percent dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ and his power his truth and so when I'm engaging the enemy or praying about taking over territory or praying against strongholds, it's a truth encounter. It's declaring mm-hmm. the truth of Jesus Christ. It's using the word of God. And it, it's not dependent on me. God allows me to enter into this. He calls to us to do it. But it is using the truth of the word of God. That is, we have this incredible weapon. So that is what we that need. Is- you know, it's it's interesting. A lot of people feel uncomfortable praying. I mean, what you're mm-hmm. talking about is authoritative. Prayer. They're almost like, I well, I can't, I can't do that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, like mm-hmm. you said, the, the example is is Jesus, and I, and I wonder, you know, if Jesus did a lot of things, not so much so that we could see what he could do, but he was in in a sense showing us what we could do and should do. And um, yeah. I, I I think that's great because I. I think a lot of people feel uncomfortable, you know, praying with authority. And um, yeah, no, that's, that's really interesting. One thing I, I learned, you know, one way to kind of like look at it is, you know, there's petition prayer where we're praying to God, you know, we're, we're taking something to God for another person. Okay. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. we're looking, we're facing towards him. And then an authoritative prayer is more like our backs are turned to God. 
we're listening to his voice and then we're speaking forth those things, you know, in his name um, to bring them into to being. Um, and it could be a, a like blessing. That. It could be, you know, binding the enemy or breaking strongholds. But um, it's it's a different type of prayer. And I, I don't think most people um, are always familiar with that type of prayer. So thanks for, for sharing that. Um, you mentor quite a few people in prayer. Um, just wondered if you could share maybe some a couple insights on what has worked um, and maybe even for your own life as far as like what really has helped you learn how to to intercede and to grow in this area. Yeah, yeah. I would say um, my mentors are, have been largely books and I have watched people who I've been challenged by people. I've heard speakers. I, I just get blown away by listening to them and wanting um, to grow and be more like them. In fact, who is that quote I had read this morning? Um, this book is by... Uh, Mark Bubeck, who is one of my mentors, mm. <laughs> and I just learned so much from him. And just this morning, I was reading, one thing will always mark a person who has both power with people and power with God. It will be greatness in prayer. Mm. And, and I don't think that greatness of like, oh, you're like, we hate that word, Mike makes us feel like, yeah. no, I'm not great. No, he just means growing in prayer, being in prayer, that marks, mm -hmm. that grows your favor with God and your favor with people, which we saw in Jesus as a child, right? Favor with God, yeah. favor with people. And and I have listened to people. And when they talk about their prayer life, I go, whoa, okay, I'm going to listen to that person because they spend time with God. That to me is one of my mentors. So um, my early mentors were Amy Carmichael, like she wrote books like Toward Jerusalem. Her poetry was often prayers to God, and I would use those to pray. Um, she wrote a book, If About Love, and I would use that to help me grow in love. Um, Ruth Myers was another one of my early mentors. She wrote 31 Days of Praise. And I cannot say how important this is. So that is one thing I often did with people when they just didn't know where to go or praise. And we're going to do a whole month together. You and I, we're just going to read that out loud. You can just read it out loud and then I'll pray, you pray, or you can just, you know, whatever they were comfortable with, but we would do that on the phone and we would just go through 31 days of praise. And that was just a opening up of seeing, oh my goodness, I can pray about these things. I can talk to God about that and what it meant to enter into praising God, even for the difficult things. So that was a huge way I often used. Another um, thing that I used to mentor people is this little book called For the Family by Sylvia Gunter. Mm. I've probably given away, I'm on my second box. So I've probably given away like maybe 150 of these to women that I know personally. Mm. And it has just been a big help. It's just a little booklet, but people just say, I, I don't know what to do. Or I'd be walking with someone and say, well, let's pray about that. Will you pray? You pray. I, <laughs> I often encounter that. Like no one, you know, is afraid to pray or they, they just, I don't know, they feel uncomfortable praying or they feel uncomfortable, especially if you mention, let's let's pray against those strongholds. Whoa, you know, what is that? Mm -hmm. So this book has got some of my favorite authors in it. She quotes, um, she quotes Mark Bubeck. She quotes, I think, Arthur Matthew, several others. Mm -hmm. But she just gives a framework. It's a little book. And she talks about the key importance of women praying mm -hmm. for their families. So she just challenges you. Anyway, I've used that. Yeah. What else? I done. I think just doing it with people. Mm -hmm. um, I've walked and prayed. One gal I walked and prayed with for several years. And I remember at first, like, she couldn't even like, oh, well, you do that. And I go, well, do you know the Lord's Prayer? And she goes, well, yeah, yeah, I know that. Well, yeah. well, let you just do the first line and pray that. And I'll pray that. So we go back and forth. I, I think it's just important to find out where people are at and their comfort mm -hmm. level, and then just help them take one little step, one little step. And by the time we finished walking in our, our prayer walking together, we would pray like the whole time. We'd walk for an hour and a half. Oh. And pray. So it just, you can, anyone can grow in prayer. And I, I think that's so important to remember. Just mm. model it, pray together, find out where they're comfortable and help them take the next step and use scripture. Help them, teach them to pray scripture. That's a huge thing. I'd print out, I'd print out passages and say, well, today we're going to pray this. And we would just mm. pray through the Psalm or pray through James. I love James for praying. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Those are some uh, that's, ways. That's really, really helpful. 
Um, you've obviously, obviously seen a lot of breakthroughs and answered prayer. And I just was wondering if you could just share maybe one that really kind of sticks out to you um, of answered prayer. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that, like what to share, because there's so mm -hmm. many. But a friend called me this week and she reminded me of something. So I thought, OK, that's the one I'm going to share. And this was really more of our early experience mm -hmm. for me in warfare. I didn't want to do warfare. It scared me. I didn't I didn't like the idea of power encounters with the enemy or taking me. I read about that stuff and I go, no, 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 not me. But um. In working at Camp Mamac with underprivileged kids, we were encountering kids that had very demonic symptoms. And I was reading Mark Bubeck and trying to learn about it. Yeah. Anyway, during this time, I was also doing a, a Bible study for women that had never that never been in the Bible, they didn't know anything about it. And one of these gals called me in deep distress one day over her sister who was threatening suicide. Wow. And she said, who, who, like, how can I help her? What can I do? And I go, well... Oh, we, she really needs people to surround her and pray. And, and, and like prayer is the answer. We've got to bring God into the situation. And she yeah. said, well, who, who is going to do that? Like who? I went, um, I will. <laughs> and I was like, okay, here we go. And she goes, can you do it today? And I go, yes. Okay. I'll come and pick you up right now. Okay. Like I didn't feel ready, but I had been reading Mark Bubeck and I knew mm -hmm. a few basics. So when we got there and we pulled in front of her house and her, her sister's involved in drugs, this gal has just a long history with a lot of ugly stuff and her family was, has, has a huge history. And so we're pulled up in front of this house and I say, okay, first of all, we're going to put on the armor of God. We're going to pray through Ephesians 6 and put on the armor of God. And we have to have our hearts right with God. And she turned and she looked at me with this angry face and said, right now I can tell that I'm getting closer to God because I feel like kicking you out of my truck and driving away. Wow. And I what? what, what? <laughs> and I, I think she just had something on her heart that she knew was, was wrong with God. And I said, we're just going to eat to pray by ourselves. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying anything. I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just saying, get your heart right, because we're about to do battle for your sister. Get your heart right. So we just quietly prayed. And mm -hmm. I said, are you ready? And she goes, yeah. You know, and so we jump out of the truck and we start, she couldn't um, get access. Her sister wouldn't answer the door. So I said, okay, we're going to just march around the house. What? I go, yeah, we're just going to walk around the house. I'm going to pray the whole time, but we're going to walk around the house. And I thought seven times sounds good. <laughs> so we started walking well, and I would be praying out loud. And she, she was just saying, God, help my sister. God, help my sister. And we were praying and walking. And then she knocked on the door again to try and get a hold of her. And at one point, she even got her sister to come to the door and they talked. I just kept marching and praying, kept marching and praying. And then um, we we left, like we got in the truck and and we left. And I was like, okay, Lord, I, I'm really trusting that that did something. Well, as a matter of fact, her sis, she called me the next day and her sister said the darkness that was overwhelming her had gone away. Hmm. And so that was just really incredible. Well, stepping forward, the thing that was bothering this gal so much she called me a couple of days later and said, you know, I have decided to marry the guy that I'm living with. Will you, you, will you help me with that? <laughs> and so it, we ended up, um, she had had church uh, that she'd been going to a little bit, had a pastor. So that marriage ha happened. And then we decided to do a reception in our backyard. And she had called me just recently and said, do you remember that day? I go, boy, do I remember that day? She goes, it was the most genuine day. And mm -hmm. I love that word genuine because here her narcotics are uh, anonymous friends were coming and her family and people that were part drunk were coming. And mm -hmm. I mean, all this, this, this gathering, but it was this beautiful, holy day. And my Bible study mm -hmm. women, we worked our tails off to make this a gorgeous place and cake mm -hmm. food and everything. And it was just this holy time. And I I saw how the Lord um, really honored obedience. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's that's remarkable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of that passage. You kind of referenced it a little bit uh, about the, the, you know, the going around Jericho, the battle of Jericho. <laughs> and I, as you was thinking in the, the rational mind, you know, th they wouldn't do that. You I know. know. <laughs> I mean, I didn't feel very you know, rational that in day. In the rational mind, they would have said, hey, there's no way to penetrate this, you know, city. It's hopeless. We don't know how to fight. Um, these people probably are pretty good at warfare. Uh, they would have 
given up. That's the, the rational mind. But when like you're listening to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit inspires you to do something, it's yeah. it's yeah. it's it oftentimes does not seem real rational. But it's kind of like God's ways are always higher than our ways. And when we do things that God like prompts us to do, um, then we see breakthroughs and, and things happen that we never knew were even possible. Yeah. And, and often when you're involved in it, you leave and you go home and you go, did anything happen? Like, it's not like you have this great feeling of victory, right? Yeah. But you just obey. Mm. I remember another time some, the Lord so impressed me to call somebody with a scripture. And I'm like, I'm like, that's silly. You know, he's, he's like busy. He's a president of this big organization. And, oh, and then I call, then I finally got, okay, I'm just going to call and read the scripture to him. And then I got him and he goes, I'm in the middle of a board meeting. You know, I go, Oh, you know, and he goes, well, just read it to him anyway. And so I read it to him and I just felt totally embarrassed, hung what? up the phone and go, okay, Lord. <laughs> but he called me that evening and said, you have no idea. Wow. How much I needed to hear that in that moment. Wow. Thank you. So obedience. Yeah. Obedience. Yeah. Boldness and obedience. Um, that's really good. Um, when you think of like intercession, um, what do you think are the, some of the most important things that people need to know? Mm. If you were like maybe writing a book on intercession, <laughs> you had maybe like three paragraphs. Uh, what would you say that are the most important things to know? Um, as we're growing in intercession? I think that um, God calls all of us to do it. Mm -hmm. Like this is not for like the super spiritual, like we have all these crazy categories. God just says like yeah. the disciples asked him to pray and he gave them this short little prayer. Like he was just helping them get steps to, to move ahead, right? So I think that it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. And we have the word, which is the sword of the spirit, right? And um, Another quote from a, a one of my another book that I've been really enjoying is Born for Battle by Arthur Matthews. Mm. And this is this is just absolutely key. He said, um, having a weapon is really different than using it. And he was giving several illustrations, but basically he said, unused weapons do not inflict casualties on the enemy or win wars. Therefore, the ability and the will to use the weapon. Uh, is what warfare is all about. It's not enough to give mental assent to the fact that a spiritual warfare is going on. Like we might even go that, oh yeah, we've read Ephesians 6. There's, it's a warfare, right? Yeah. But if we don't decide, have a will to mm. use the weapons God has given us, nothing's going to happen. And we all have this tool. We, I mean, you think of the many, many ways we have the scripture all around us. We have the word of God. And if we don't use it, it's this weapon that's just not yeah. sitting there. So I think that's just so key is using the weapons God's given us to use. Um, you know, that passage is it um, that talks about we, we're not fighting the war according to man's ways where that God's given us weapons that are to fight strongholds in our mind against mm -hmm. pretensions, against thoughts. And we need to use those weapons. So I think like putting on the armor and using scripture like Jesus did mm. is just so key. That and then great. persistence, yeah, not giving up. Um, and that's that's the hard one. And that's where you need other people to pray with you and encourage you because sometimes you can get so discouraged when you're not seeing something. Um, so I think group prayer as well as as a prayer by yourself is really important. And using scripture, putting on your armor, and then growing. You mm. can use mentors. You if you don't if you're not a book reader, no problem. Get to know people who do pray. Yeah. Um, pursue um, learning and growing and using your weapon because that's what a weapon's all about, right? And no one gets good at sword fights until they practice it. If mm. you just say, "Oh, I've got this lovely, gorgeous sword," and yeah. it's on my mantle or in my bookshelf, what good is it doing? Mm. It's you have to pick it up to use it. So that's really, yeah. really good. I, I think what you said is really important too. It's almost like when we categorize things like intercessors, then oftentimes people will think, well, I'm not that. Yes. Um, yes. And there are people that are just, you know, you could maybe say they're, they're intercessors, but that doesn't mean that we're not all called to intercession and to pray without ceasing. 
And like you said, to, to take up the sword of the spirit and do warfare. Yeah. I, I do think there are people who are gifted in the with the gift of intercession. I would not say that's yeah. me at all. But I I think that when your heart grows for people, mm -hmm. then you of course you want to connect them to God. That's what it's about. And yeah. it's not all about your stuff. It's about saying, God, I want to see you do something in this life. I want to see you do something in this people group. I want to see you do something in my city. I mean, though, you know, yeah. your as your heart grows in caring and loving. Then you want to do something. And sometimes we can feel helpless. Like, what can I do? And then we act as if prayer is the last resort. No, no, it is the first resort. It is the thing you do before you do anything else. And that's a really important point. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, I really appreciate you just taking the time to just share with us what you're learning and uh, leaning into. And I was just wondering if you could just um, maybe share a word of encouragement to someone that maybe is just, like I said, starting out intercession. Mm -hmm. um, what, mm -hmm. what would you say to somebody that's just saying, hey, I want to begin to walk and lean into intercession. Where do I start? Okay, I would take us back again to what Jesus said to his disciples when they asked him, we, Lord, we want to learn how to pray. You know, we're, we're recognizing you're plugged into the power source and we want to be too. And he gave them a very short prayer. Like he didn't put this huge pile of like, well, these are all the things you have to do to be an intercessor, right? He just said, pray in this way. And it was short. That's where you start. So I think that's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, Shadonke Johnson, who I, I believe is an intercessor and is a great model to me. He always says, five minutes. You got five minutes? Start with five minutes today. Um, I forget who said it. What you do daily will be, become important to you. Hmm. Uh, I think it might have been Ralph Winters. Um, and I, I often think of that. My coffee is important to me. I have to do it every day, right? Yeah. But, it, but if you just take time every day to do something, it will start to be important and it, and it'll grow. So don't be discouraged by that. And, and I also, I love this passage uh, in James. It says, is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. <laughs> is that you? Like, have you got any troubles? You should pray. Is anyone happy? Oh, let him sing. Is yeah. anyone of you sick? Call the elders of the church. You know, and he just talks about mm. um, praying for one another that you be healed and and that's so key too. Like you're you're struggling with something, share it with someone. Have mm -hmm. them pray for you. Humble yourself enough to say, "I need help with this," and then have them pray for you. And in that humility, you grow. So he says the prayer, and then following that, the prayer of a righteous one is powerful and effective. And it says, you know what? I do as a man just like us. That's my encouragement. We're all in the same boat. There's no great, great Christians. There's just sinners and a God. <laughs> and we're all in the same yeah. boat. And some people are a little bit more practiced. That's like, you know, it's in any game. Like if you're good at, at uh, soccer, you've practiced a bit more. Yeah. So just practice, just start, take this from the Lord. You got troubles? You got somebody who needs healing? Pray. It doesn't yeah. say you have to be qualified. It doesn't say you have to be called an intercessor or have a position. It just says, is any one of you? That's all of us. So we just start there. Just start. Don't be discouraged. I remember one time, um, one of my uh, one of the gals I know was in a listening to Shadonke Johnson speak at my uh, church in San Jose, California, mm -hmm. and he was talking about how his Muslim mother began to pray, and and he just told this whole story about her. And she came afterwards and she said, "You mean I could pray? Like I could actually pray for missionaries, and it would make a difference?" Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You can be an intercessor. Anybody can be an intercessor. It just means you have enough heart for someone else that you can take mm. and pray for them. Can you do that? Then you're on your way to being an intercessor. 